Welcome to the fourth episode of the Best Week Channel. My name is Mimi Bekaso. I'm an engineer in computer science, a designer, an entrepreneur, and among other things, I love biotech, biomedicine, and all those hacks that make us have a greater, longer, and safer life. And starting by that, I want to say that today's episode is going to be my last, let's hope, <laughs> uh, at least by now, of uh, the epigenetics. Uh, talk that we have been having and I promise this is going to be the last one um, just to wrap up um, some info some data that I think is very important and some little studies that have been done uh, about epigenetics and no further ado let's go into the talk and as I said uh, in the previous episode and of course it's um, not easy to digest, especially when there is not much information available on how to recognize our epigenome or how to recognize what we are prone to according to our epigenetic um, makeup, let's say, or changes or conversion along along the way of our lives. And, and it's interesting that even though we cannot point specifically at um, why is the epigenetics acting like this, but we can recognize how our body is behaving or how are we engaging in these um, differences in the metabolism and differences in how we perceive or we receive some uh, sicknesses. And so there are a little uh, ways to understand that our genetics are changing. And uh, as I mentioned in the previous episode, there are some different tests that can be done according to uh, recognizing uh, the level of DNA methylation. And, and if we know we are hyper or hypo, and then we can carry on and understand, okay, this might let me um, be propense to something, right? So we we have certain ways um, and they are not as uh, accomplished or as established as other tests, but there are certain um, things that we can go uh, and further investigate if we are known that we develop certain diseases or we have a family with certain conditions and it haven't been shown that is in the DNA makeup. So if it's not in the DNA, it has to be in what wraps it and on what reads it that is the epigenome. Um, epigenetic processes intimately link environmental factors to our genetic code by allowing outside events to leave biochemical footprints on our genome. The structural adaptation of chromosomal regions so as to register, signal, or perpetuate altered activity states. And, and that's a, a, a word that it's, it's crucial. Altered and then activity states. So that's implicating that there's something erroneous, correct? Something different and something there is a variation and that's the whole sensation let's say uh, to pull a war on epigenetics because it's those errors those alterations those altered states that are the ones that then make us read the genome wrongly and make us have these diseases so it's it's all about the error it's all about the altered state and it's like coding when you code and you have a error okay the system is not gonna load right or your app it's not loading it's stuck, stuck somewhere or it's a glitch <laughs> those are the glitches that we are having inside our system and and there are uh, carry outwardly on our genetics uh, and that's the epigenome it's, it's fascinating to know that uh, we have all this communication level 
outside that our genes that can cause so many things in a good and a bad way. So let's say also that um, we can um, invigorate our epigenome with certain lifestyles and then we mentioned certain um, chemicals that um, are being studied. So if we can really have all of this in the future to just regulate our epigenome in a good way, that, that will be the next be best thing happening in medicine. Um, epigenetics offer mechanisms by which cells that are equipped with identical genetic information can acquire and maintain an individual molecular fingerprint reflecting not only the cell's history but also programming in response to future events. Therefore, um, all of this epigenome, uh, if we modify it, then the generations to come will have it modified it too. So if it's in a good way, it's great, right? So we can do that. That's the positive uh, side of uh, epigenome, that we can alter it and program it to develop better bodies, um, better health, and um, develop stronger metabolism. Um, so, uh, how this whole controversial thing about, um, as I re you remember, uh, I was saying, if the epigenome receive all this inheritance, all these markers through their germline, and some uh, scientists say no, because once someone new comes to life, that it's all removed, but then there are some little, 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 very little markers there. No, it's a mRNA. Um, but either way, or a way we don't know, um, these heritable changes in gene functions cannot be explained by the changes in the DNA. So we read the whole DNA and we don't find, well, yes, but why this disease or why the body is acting this way. And it's not because of, of the DNA per se, it's, it's the epigenome. So there is some inheritance that we carry on generation through generation um, that these markers are long lasting sometimes and there are the ones that are carry on uh, in one two three generations after so but they still so there is a line there uh, a conducive line of, of information of uh, readability and communication that the epigenome does and uh, that's very interesting to know. Uh, all structural adaptations of chromosomal regions that can register signal or perpetual activity, alter activity states, are um, what we define now as epigenetics. So that's another way to say it, right? Transient or chronic environmental events can permanently alter the epigenetic code. Long-term epigenetic Remodeling of the stress axis in response to stressful experiences early in life. Then the cascade of epigenetic events involved in the development of drug addictions mm, observed in experimental animals. These marks accumulated and maintained within the epigenetic code throughout the life and carry important information about interactions between the individual and its environment. In some instances, this information can be highly relevant for the offspring and may theoretically provide an adaptive advantage. So there, there you see that the offspring can carry on this uh, that we generate in our epigenome. So according with, uh, with data on drugs and our epigenetic age um, minimizes with the use of drugs. So that's another marker or another clock, and we're going to talk at the end about that, uh, that tell us that using drugs can really interfere on our body uh, availability of being healthy. So if our epigenome is out there by drugs, and then we have less or we age more 
through drugs because it alter our epigenome. Mm, what can I say? <laughs> I can tell you right now, right? I don't need to say it. So, um, drugs is another thing that uh, conduces to um, developing aging problems and having less healthy age per se. Um, also, this is very important, complex diseases as psychiatric disorders have a major heritable component. So, and sometimes, as I tell you, we read the DNA back and forth, back and forth, and we don't find how they inherit this psychiatric problem. And it's not in the DNA, it's in the epigenome. So this missing heritability uh, is what uh, gen um, geneticists are um, trying to discover, to study, to, to know, okay, maybe this uh, long time uh, gene is not a gene. It's the epigenome is the marker on top of the gene that is being carried through generations in a family. And then you see these problems of, of people on recurrent depression and, and they give them all the medicines they try. The softer one didn't work. The hard ones they didn't work. They take them off. They take them back again. And they are not really attacking the problem. The problem is this uh, psychiatric problem comes from past generation trauma. So comes comes from remember the rodents that, <laughs> that they were pinched with electricity while they were smelling cherry blossom. They were smelling it and they felt the same trauma. They might not know uh, what caused it, but it was that alteration, modification in the father that suffered the electricity with the scent that fears the scent, the next generation, and the next generation is sensitive to this uh, scent. It's the same with humans. So um, it's not a medicine that is not working. It's the approach on all these uh, uh, psychiatric um, diseases. And I don't want to put any term on psychiatrists and on psychiatric problems because if we, I am a firmer believer that all psychiatric problems, even though it's being brought uh, since born with your genetic code or with your epigenome, um, they, they are not uh, permanent. I think that they can be temporal. And the epigenome can alter this uh, long time recurring state of of depression, of um, bipolarism, of every other disease that we know in, uh, it's, it's being provoked uh, in so many patients. But if we can alter the epigenome, um, and then we can rehabilitate all these people and and don't make it forever and they they can end it and their chemicals their own chemicals can be uh, substantially regenerated at the levels they should be without medication so I think we can go that way we can really uh, induce studies and therapies that induce the epigenome to be altered to modify all these chemicals that the mitochondria can intervene and put the energy where it should be, not where we don't need, and and forget about all these medications that make all these people zombie, <laughs> or you know, in the states that a moment are fine, but then uh, it's like okay, <laughs> what happened? That person, you know, still is in this agony, in this depression. Why? So. Uh, we need to check on that, on the epigenome. Um, I really need uh, to, to have this talk to you, uh, so to, to have conscious that we can do these things um, in the long term. Um, transgender, 
transgender reaction or epigenetic uh, effects occur when an environment trigger induces epigenetic changes that can be observed in at least one subsequent generation. This is important. During prenatal life, uh, there is something called uh, fetal programming. So epigenetic changes in somatic cells of the developing fetus and can affect its development. This may ultimately lead to specific phenotype traits in postnatal life. So you remember when I said in the first epigenetic episode, the mother has some stress, so has some uh, traumatic problem while pregnant, then those kids tend to suffer. It depends if the mother had some caloric restriction, the kids will have insulin problems. If the mother had some stress, the kids will tend to be depressive or tend to have depression later in life. Uh, that's what um, the research concludes. And there is some behavioral transfer. Mm -hmm. In this case, epigenetic changes are elicited and propagated from one generation to the next via behavioral or social interaction between parents and the offspring. This rule requires that the environmental factors inducing the epigenetic changes be present at each generation, uh, and that the fair route involves the germline and does not require repetition of the trigger but the transfer of epigenetic changes in germ cells by sexual reproduction. So these are the ways that then a baby can inherit um, all these problems, and um, we need to know. So once you get pregnant or once your girlfriend, wife, um, family member wanna be and get pregnant, we all should uh, try to have an environment free of stress, free of trauma, not uh, to be predisposed to eat too much, not to eat too less. So it has to be an adequate and balanced environment for um, the mother uh, can have this pregnancy giving a child that has a consistent level of everything so therefore the epigenome on on these uh, babies uh, can be healthy can be programmed um, accordingly what the gene says that's what we read and we don't see errors uh, in them um, developing embryos uh, exposed in utero also um, can be altered um, their epigenome uh, and these are the epigenetic changes in somatic cells and that's called fetal programming um, and that implicates environmental stimuli that are evolutionary relevant um, adaptive response preparing an organism to future external factors uh, so that's, that's the markup that if the mother or the father went to war and, uh, and suffered PSTD and there is a mark there and that mark goes along um, the offspring so that's what they're trying to to, to, to refer um, there are ways that these um, generations consistently get some mark in that epigenome um, influence of maternal diet on the physiology and health of the supreme is also unknown in the epigenome, uh, prenatal stress on brain development and brain reactivity as well. Also affect germinal cells in the embryo, so therefore the following um, concurrent offspring of these embryos uh, will also have these markers uh, in them. Um, quali qualify as a germline epigenetic effects that go on generation through generation. Um, that strong evidence in humans shows that in utero exposure to altered nutrition, whether under or over nutrition, maternal obesity and high fat diet is a major risk for the development of obesity and diabetes in adulthood. Have been observed in rodent models and are associated with epigenetic changes in liver, pancreas, and fat tissue, as well as brain regions involved in feeding and metabolism. The observed epigenetic alterations are changes in DNA methylation and 
and heaps of histones and transgenal original mutations at multiple metabolism related genes. Um, prenatal stress can result from psychologically and physiological threatening situations, has been associated with se severe behavioral alterations such as temperamental problems, impaired cognition and attention, and symptoms of autism, depression, and schizophrenia during childhood and adulthood in humans. Impaired cognition, increased stress, responsiveness, and depression, and anxiety behaviors have been observed in animal models of prenatal stress. Glutic uh, glucocorticoid injections during pregnancy mimic the effects of prenatal stress. Changes in gene expressions and the methylation of the glucocor glucocorticoid stress hormone receptor were observed together with alterations in serotonin energetic signaling, depressive behavior, and increased stress responsiveness. Other prenatal stresses such as infection, starvation, or hypoxia have similarly been linked to depression and neurodevelopmental disorders like schizophrenia, HDHD, and autism. Mm -hmm. Transgenerational germline effects of prenatal stress exposure. Also, there is a social and behavioral transfer that uh, relates with the epigenome and is not directly linked, let's say, as a marker, but it tends to be combined and to be correlated. And the first and most formative environmental experience of the newborn occur throughout the interactions with the mother. The quality of maternal care recognized as a major factor determining the psychological development of and well-being of the offspring. In rats, maternal care is important. Mother that spends licking, grooming, and nursing her pups, um, the amount of quality of care strongly affect cognitive and emotional development of the pups. So, licking, grooming, let's call it LG mothers, uh, compared with pups raised by high LG mothers, pups raised with low LG mothers have increased stress responsiveness associated with elevated activity of the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal HPA stress axis. When adult, the ne neglected rats respond to stressful situations with prolonged secretion of the stress hormone corticosterone. They have less glucocorticoid receptor GR, mRNA, and protein in the hippocampus, but more corticotrophin releasing hormone CRH mRNA in the hypothalamus. Behaviorally, the spring of all low LG mothers have higher anxiety and impaired learning when adult. Let's do an equivalent of what could and what probably is happening with humans. There is no study in humans uh, that I have, have uh, yet seen in my hands, but why we use rats because there is so much uh, parallelism in the behavior and the reaction of our bodies and the psychology on, on it so um, we can see it we can say that probably that happens also in humans because it's elicited by maternal behavior the altered promoter methylation can be maintained across generations Cross-fostering prevents such transfer, and the offspring of low LG mothers are raised by high LG surrogate mothers. The methylation level of the GR promoter is restored. DNA methylation is directly associated with the behavior of the rearing mother, but is independent from the biological mother. Clear example of transgenerative transmission of an epigenetic mark through a maternal dependent model of behavioral transfer, and that's another way of the greatness that uh, the epigenome can be. So if we have these mothers, the real mothers, having um, not really a maternal care, but then you bring a surrogate, then the epigenome and the DNA methylation uh, is balanced. So uh, that's something amazing. I mean, <laughs> we can really do these things to, to, to have a better um, uh, consequences with our epigenome and the epigenome of, of these young uh, children. 
orchids. Germline transmission requires that epigenetic marks be first established in the germ cells of the parent generation, maintained through meiosis, then passed to the offspring. A female may vary her level of care to her pups depending on the fitness or attractiveness of her mate. So guys, try to be a little bit more attractive <laughs> to your females because um, this reveals that they care more if their um, male part, a counterpart is a fit or attractive. There is no really uh, a study per se of how uh, rodents, or female rodents, um, choose how they are attractive, these males, but um, we know in human nature how a woman gets attractive to male, so um, there is a good sign there that if you want a good mother, then you have to be very fit and very attractive uh, to the female. Stressful conditions are negative environment for environmental factors with potentially a strong impact on behavior across generations. In the context of psychology and neuroscience, stress can be described as the state of arousal of an individual in response to the perceived situation. Stressors can affect brain functions and mental health throughout life, in particular when experienced early in life, stressful and traumatic events are major risk factors for the development of behavioral and emotional disorders later in life. And that's what I was saying um, in previous episodes. Maybe right now you don't feel nothing, it's okay, we are fine. 30 years after, then you see what got caused. And, and of course, you don't see it at the moment, but if we know now, then we can behave um, adequately, right? <laughs> With our lives. Um, or variate uh, our habits, as we said before. Prenatal stress uh, have long-term effects on brain functions. Offsprings, and let me read this uh, very slow uh, because it might be ha might have some my people oppose this, but a study says. When pregnant dams are exposed to stressful conditions during gestation, their male offspring is repeat. Male offspring is this This <laughs> okay, can't read it. This macunized, shortened, and non-genital distance reduce male typical copulatory behavior, and is highly sensitive to stress. So. Very so, we are dismaculinizing our male offsprings if we are stressed, um, and that's and, and shortening their anogenital distance. Um, postnatal early stress um, also have a negative es effect in the involvement of epigenetic processes. Um, all this sensitivity on, 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 on our offspring uh, of to stress is very important. The offspring of prenatally stressed males born and raised by non-stressed females also tend to have increased stress sensitivity and dismasculinization. In the brain of the offspring one day after birth, a shift toward a female like expression pattern is observed for several genes important for neurodevelopment and several microRNAs are also significantly reduced. These modifications are transmitted to, to the patriline, raising the possibility that mRNAs present in the sperm may play a role in the transgenerational transmission of the behavioral changes induced by stress. More studies are, however, needed to address this important question. So, um, if we are dismasculinizing our offspring by stress, um, could it be the cause of certain things? I don't know, but that's what research says, and what is the case with females, right? So, 
we we need to investigate that i think um because it's really important several molecular pathways were perturbed across generation um when um se uh, there is a development of the present uh, phenotypes um and that's also another side of of uh, how how stress can relate to the offspring the transmission of stress induced changes across generations was observed through both males and females so those signs of 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 separation either in female or 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 male uh, kids um it might be uh because of 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 this uh, this inheritance um Pups that were exposed to stress dam displaying poor and abusive maternal behavior. Um, and rats that are exp exposed to abusive mothers express lower level of brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF, mRNA, in the prefrontal co cortex, coinciding with decreased DNA methylation of the BDNF gene. Although we cannot, this effect could be passed onto the offspring through the mother, um, but not could not be completely reversed by cross-fostering. Possibly transmission of epigenetic information through the germline. That's um, another something interesting. Um, also, the lifetime risk for post-traumatic stress disorder in the offspring depends on the presence of maternal and to a lesser extent extent of paternal PTSD, so the offspring of PTSD mothers are more propensed to develop um, these uh, traumas um, than, the, than the ones that had fathers with PTSD. So that's, I think, a good sign, let's say, because most of the males are the ones that suffer uh, of PTSD, especially uh, veterans and um, all these um, amazing people that went to war or went to uh, difficult stations or places and, and, and develop and then any other person that have PTSD for other reasons. Um, environmental toxicants for transgenerational, ne transgenerational inheritance of environmental induced phenotypes also uh, in comes from the endocrine disruptor being clozolin an anti-androgenic compound that is used as a fungicide for agricultural fruit crops. Exposing mice repeatedly to high doses of vinclozolin during meat gestation increases uh, chances of infertility, tumor formation, kidney disease, immune abnormalities, and anxiety behavior across four generations. Okay, vinclozolin, I hope we don't have those on our fruits. Um, these effects correlate with abnormal DNA methylation in the sperm across generations. Widespread differences in gene expression were observed in the hippocampus and amygdala, brain regions important for cognitive functions and mood regulation. Finally, drugs. Alcohol consumption is known to affect uh, the epigenetic mechanisms in several organs profound epigenome wide effects of alcohol abuse have been reported endogenous retroviral sequences which are normally silenced by dna may were less methylated also in utero exposure to alcohol has teratogenic effects on the fetus partially linked to epigenetic mechanism mothers i love some mothers love their wine at 7 8 p.m. let's try to avoid it if uh, if we um, believe uh, this information that is research alcohol exposure in utero, in utero also reduces dna methylation at the differentially methylated domain of the paternally imprinted grow relating gene h19 in the sperm of exposed mice most notably a similar decrease of the same cpg sites is observed in the brain of the offspring there are a lot of consequences. Um, cocaine has a profound effect on chromatin remodeling in several brain areas involving reward circuits. Reward circuits. So serotonin, dopamine, cocaine.
right, right, um, such as the nucleus accumbens, um, to measurably behavioral alterations in the offspring of male rats exposed to prolonged concave self administration paradigm. Uh, and there is a persistent impact of drugs on, of abuse on behavior, such as compulsive drug seeking and relapse, clearly imply epigenetic mechanisms. So yes, then why why you think someone is not like over something? Uh, it's the epigenetic modification, the reading uh, that the, it's altered through drugs. Uh, there are also um, this is something that is also interesting to point. Rodents raised in environmental with ample sensory, moral, social, and cognitive stimulation have improved cognitive performance compared to animals raised in a standard environment. And that's it's the same as how we you know, nurture our kids if we have a self safe, healthy, um, educational environment. Uh, don't we see our kids prosper? It's the same with rodents. We see it in, in the little laboratory, we see it in the big picture. And uh, hey, it's, <laughs> it's real, right? If we bring all this soft uh, knowledge and soft education to our kids, they're gonna have better lives because they're gonna have an epigenome that is correlated to to what it should be with their genetic makeup. Mm. Studies investigating nutrition and food availability also. Um, mothers who were pregnant during this time gave birth to children who had reduced birth weight and developed a host of clinical disorders during adulthood, ranging from obesity to glucose intolerance and coronary heart disease. And that's uh, on the time of the Dutch famine. Uh, in 1944-45. Um, surprisingly, the grandchildren of mother, mothers exposed to famine during gestation so, showed similar effects. This raises the possibility that the starvation during pregnancy might have induced epigenetic changes in the germline of the exposed embryos that were then passed on to their own children. Food supply of the paternal grandmother was associated with a mortality risk of granddaughters because of cardiovascular disease and diabetes, whereas food supply of the paternal grandfather was associated with a mortality risk of grandsons. It's crazy, so it's like if we really make a map of all of this, and then we go like, okay, let's not do this and let's not do that, and <laughs> right? And then we might have a, we might have a, a labyrinth full of, of, of clues that then we can, you know, find a solution. Um, also, um, when rats were fed low-protein diet across many generations, their offspring presented complex behavior alterations such as deficits in home-orienting behavior and visual discrimination. Uh, altered birth weight, impaired glucose tolerance, and reduced insulin secretions are also problems. Um, when uh, there was some food restriction or overfeeding in mothers. Um, molecularly, these transgenerational effects are associated with altered gene expression in the liver across three generations. Um, also want to say about the mRNA, that um, the RNA that also causes changes in our epigenome uh, are present in sperm. So uh, that's how it can be also uh, um, inherited by the offspring. Uh, fertilizing human sperm can carry an estimated of 10 uh, to 20 Fg of RNA to the oocyte, uh, to constituting a direct signal that carries information from one generation to the next. That's what that, but <laughs> I think all this data is very important if we, uh, I mean, it's, Everything is not for everyone, but I'm trying to, to, to just do the whole uh, picture and, and I'm again hitting the pool mic. <laughs> mm. I'm very uh, older with all this data. It's, it's like there is a solution for everything to know. So if, if we know of all of this, it's not all for one person, but 
everything is for someone that might need this information. Um, and that's uh, another thing that uh, we need to differ differentiate and correlate um, nature with nurture. So you were born with these genes. How you nurture it, how your mother nurtured it. So that's conducive to how your your genes are gonna be read and how your life is gonna be affected, how your life is gonna be um, healthy. And and that's, that's that's the the link between nature, which is a genetic factor, and nurture, which are the environmental factors. Um, on the one hand, epigenetic marks may be able to inform us about disease susceptibility of a given individual, for example, higher methylation levels at a specific sites of the glucocorticoid stress hormone receptor have been detected in the brains of suicide victims uh, with different methylation profiles associated with a victim's history of childhood abuse. So that's very important to know also if all these things are related with someone that you know or with you um, how these things uh, change and then you can go to a primary doctor or a genesis and ask um, what we can do about this or show to every doctor you look at this information let's work with this let's work on this I, I, I want I want to see if it's changing something on, on this problem I can be of a better health um, let me give you some examples here. Epigenetics help determine which fu function a cell will have. For example, if it becomes a heart cell or a nerve cell or a skin cell. So if there is an error and then tells you become a skin cell or you are in the liver, <laughs> that's an epigenetic error. Um, your muscle cells and nerve cells have the same DNA but work differently. A nerve cell transforms information to other cells in our body. A muscle cell has a structure that aids in your body ability to move epigenetics allows the muscle cell to turn on genes to make proteins important for its job and turn off genes important for a nerve, nerve cell's job. Um, not all epigenetic changes are permanent. Some epigenetic changes can be added or removed in response to changes in behavior or environment. And we, we, we seen, we talk about 20 cases like uh, if we alter our food, then we can alter certain genes. If we alter um, our sleep patterns, if we go to uh, cognitive therapy, we can alter some trauma, so it's great. Um, a certain parts of the H AHRR gene, smokers tend to have less DNA methylation than non-smokers. Uh, also, germ germs can change your epigenetics to weaken your immune system. This helps the germ to survive. Infections with these germs can cause changes to histones in some of your immune cells that result in turning off the IL-1 to B gene. Turning off of this gene weakens your immune system and improves the survival of mycobacterium tuberculosis. So there we have one specific gene that can be uh, turned off or off uh, by this bacteria um, and by these germs. And uh, if we know already that, uh, we, we are like revealing all of this stuff through um, uh, epigenetics. Certain mutations more likely uh, make a person develop cancer, right? We talk about this. Some epigenetic changes increases your cancer risk. For example, having a mutation in the BRCA1 gene that prevents it from working properly makes you more likely to get breast and other cancers. Increased DNA methylation that results in decreased BRCA1 gene expression raises your risk for breast Cancer, other cancer, and while cancer cells have increased DNA methylation in certain genes, overall DNA methylation levels um, are lower compared to normal cells. Epigenetics can be used to help determine which type of cancer a person has or can help to find hard to detect cancers early. 
and and that's why we talk about hypermetallation hypometallation so whether whatever you have they can investigate if you are propensed or you already have and it's not detected yet some type of cancer like colon cancer um and, and this is something interesting and i'm i'm finishing this very soon uh, can exercise and a healthy diet reduce your bio biological age and we talk our biological age is the age since we were born but we have many clocks and we have different um, clock aging um, mechanisms to determine how old we are not just by since where we were born because uh, believe it or not and you might believe it uh, some people uh, can have 20 years old and look like 40 and some people can have 60 and look like uh, 40 so um, and not only the look sometimes and I will tell you in the future the skin reveals how our inner cells are so if your skin is healthy um, inside of you also it's, it's probably healthy um, at least um, all, all the skin inside that we have um, uh, and uh, well um, DNA metallation and epigenetic mutation load biological age was reduced by physical activity and that's about two years reduced in, in a healthy and plant-based diet also with uh, almost a year so um, this was an analysis done by uh, um, let's say about 20 months randomized control trial in healthy postmenopausal women um, so yes exercise and health diet can reduce um, your biological age they say yes physical activity by two years and a healthy plant-based diet uh, almost a year not almost a year 0 0.66 but um, it's great if you combine exercising routines and a combine a healthy diet you're reducing your age um, also um, uh, the biological age correlates with the reflection of quality of life and physical and mental functioning. DNA M clocks are epigenetic clocks based on DNA metallation. And also there are DNA M dream age as the next generation clocks um, in combination with sex, chronological age and smoking pack years and the seven plasma proteins associated with mortality and morbidity. A person can answer um, what their age uh, is uh, not only by uh, uh, biology DNA M clocks and biological age uh, and DNA age acceleration um, and is associated the difference between DNA age and chronological age is associated with HIV Down syndrome and the following age related issues Alzheimer's disease Parkinson's disease and AMI Atrophic lateral sclerosis and mortality. So when we see a change, a difference, uh, and there are from DNA and age and chronological age, there these these um, these diseases, these problems, these infections can happen, right? HIV, Down syndrome, uh, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and lateral sclerosis and mortality. So that's what happens when somebody dies, right? And uh, DMA clocks have different strengths and weaknesses. DMA M green age and DNA M phenol age are better indicators of our age, yes, related health and functional outcomes. Um, and here's something interesting too. Uh, and we're gonna talk about supplements plenty uh, in the future, but alpha ketoglutarate uh, can reverse biological age. And the study found that epigenetic age um, decreased by about eight years after participants began taking supplements with alpha ketoglutarate and either vitamin A for men or vitamin D for women for four to ten months. So <laughs> we, we, we should get some of uh, this um, AKJ, right, <laughs> on the spot. Um, age is typically expressed with the chronological age, as we said, but it doesn't reflect our biological age. Several biological clocks have been developed to attempt to measure biological age by assessing changes linked in aging process, like DNA methylation patterns, 
is a measure of the gene expression. Uh, some evidence suggests that alpha ketoglutarate, a compound formed due to metabolism, may extend the lifespan of mice and fruit flies too. <laughs> so, some AKG for li life extension. Um, a supplement containing 1,000 milligrams of calcium AKG and either 1,000 IU of vitamin D uh, in women or 900 milligrams of vitamin A in men. Um, and this was a study, biological age was estimated using an epigenetic test known as true age, which measures the methylation of nine areas of three genes. And the assessment was that made before or and after participants that took the for four to ten months. So compare an average of 7.96 years improvement in their estimated epigenetic age, 8.44 years for men and 6.98 years for women. So if men take AKG, like they're gonna be li live longer, a little longer than women that take. Who knows? Uh -huh. That's great. Uh, reflecting a younger biological age. Chronic stress is associated with accelerate, accelerated biological aging. Um, but why? Uh, if we use the telomere length, we're gonna talk um, also about telomeres and how we can at least try to maintain the length uh, of the endings. Um, and non-communicable diseases like cardiometabolic diseases and mental disorders. So chronic stress tend lead to that and unhealthy behaviors like smoking, alcohol, behavioral and psychological resilience factors, which include culture, environmental and lifestyle habits, may also modify these associations. Epigenetic clocks based on DNA methylation are popular to assess biological age and uh, appear to provide more accurate assessment. Uh, and cumulative stress was associated with accelerated epigenetic aging and stress-related psychological measures, uh, adrenal sensitivity and as insulin resistance. In April 21, a systematic review reported that BMI, HIV infections, and being male was associated with acceleration of one of more or more epigenetic clocks while chronic disease was also associated with acceleration of epigenetic clocks. Stress associated outcomes were not mentioned. Um, so males uh, also need to be, be well aware of that. Um, also, self-control is influenced by genetics. While the study summarized here suggests that uh, self-control could also influence genetics in turn and that's, that's amazing like if you are self-control um, or your children children with better self-control age it more slowly mm -hmm. so if you have children you teach them some self-control they will age slowly that's great and also have reduced epigenetic remarriage age um, vitamin D may associated with slower epigenetic aging in older adults with vitamin D deficient, and and that's number one key thing to take. Uh, also, vitamin D is never it's never enough <laughs> of having vitamin D, uh, especially if you live in there or spend their time most of the time in their areas, uh, because apart from uh, Reducing your epigenetic age by consumption of vitamin D, it also alleviates so many problems. Like uh, you can, um, let's say, evade cancer if you have good vitamin D levels. Most people that suffer metabolic diseases, syndromes, and uh, and cancer are low deficient in vitamin D. And I don't know if the correlation is before or after, but uh, so if we can have our vitamin D up, then uh, we're good. <laughs> um, there are different clocks that we're going to talk also. The Cora clock, the Hanum's clock, and the Phenol age, and the Grim age. And in recent years, researchers have identified that many lifestyle factors, such as diet, smoking, and exercise habits, uh, and also vitamin D, can generate different uh, uh, changes in epigenetic aging. Um, because, uh, for example, if you have vitamin D deficiency, you can have uh, higher levels of DNA methylation and therefore DNA methylation age. DNA methylation, the, the addition of a methyl group 
to assess the residue of DNA is one type of epigenetic mechanism that can alter gene activity. It can be influenced by a variety of factors such as diet, smoking and stress. Sometimes of DNA metallation have been linked to aging and higher risk of disease. And this is something interesting for hardcore vegans. Vegans and non-vegetarians differ in their metallation of severe CPG sites and genes. Veganism was mainly associated hypometallation of various genes um, the author noted that hypometallation of methyl transferase like 1 METTL1 consistently observed in vegans in the current study may play a role in tumor suppression mm -hmm. that's amazing uh, and then cannabis hi <laughs> cannabis uh, promotes epigenetic aging and this study found that more frequent cannabis use between ages 13 to 30 was associated with a higher biological age, seemingly due to specific genetic change. So yes, uh, having uh, use of uh, and consumption of cannabis reduces your epigenetic age, therefore you age more. The prospective cohort study examined association between cannabis use and epigenetic markers of among 154 people from the southwestern United States, beginning at age 13, the participants annually report the frequency of cannabis used within the past month. When participants were 30 years old, the investigator, investigators assessed their epigenetic age using two epigenetic clocks, Garmage and Dupont E2 AM, both of which assess DNA methylation patterns derived from blood cells and the results after adjustment for potential co-founders, lifestyle cannabis use was associated with higher epigenetic age. This finding appeared to be due specifically to a reduction on methylation, hypometylation of a specific site CG0557592 on the RL hydrocarbon receptor HRN gene. Hypometallation of genes typically increases their expression, and the CG0557592 one site of the HR gene is, has been linked to cigarette smoking and exposure of type pollution called PM2.5, suggesting that this change could be a result of exposure to combustion products. And there is also a phenomenon known as EAA, epigenetic age acceleration. Um, this study examined associations between EEA and healthy longevity, and um, the results were that uh, there, um, if we have a good DNA uh, stimuli and um, a good balance in DNA methylation, our EEA is, is, is good in women uh, that are 90 and have in tactile mobility and cognition and so to live longer and to have a life extension at the end and uh, just wrapping this up uh, for everybody in this case, case was a study for women but also for men if we have if we plan to have longer lives uh, we need to have to try to have our DNA methylation balance let's say because we all methylate um, so let's not be hypo, hyper, and, and, and this is conducive to having longer lives uh, and live past 90 and with no cognition problems and with no other disorders. So that's a really a uh, hope for everyone in the community, in the health community, and in everyone that suffers any disease, that if we can really um, make a map of... Uh, our problems and then research about epigenetics in that specific problem and where it comes from and how it comes from that we confront the problem directly and long lasting we can change and reverse maybe our disorders, diseases, problems, even cancer. So I leave you with that um, little note 
And if you feel that you have something or you know you have something on someone you love, family member, friend, um, you can try and investi investigate. It's very simple right now, right? Um, go to examine.com if you want. And it's a simpler way to, to get into journals and, and, and to know. Uh, uh, the first read is, is, is very good. We are promoting it, but uh, if you are first trying to start, um, let's um, do the search uh, on what your problem is. Uh, let's say metabolic syndrome, hypertension, epigenetics. And there might be some study that is specific for you on what gene or what marker is turning what gene on or off, or, or what causes on even uh, what chemicals can be found to to help this switch to to be uh, silent or to be turned and specifically of what uh, disease or problem you have and what you need so let's find hope in epigenetics and in the future studies i hope there is a lot of people uh, that um, can go further in this investigation and i hope a lot of money is being put so the donors around um, in the health environment uh, let's put some money on um, epigenetic research um, because this is very key to um, level up um, the health problems in society that we have right now not only in america but around the world and if we can find uh, the causes and consequences and the markers and how we turn it on or off um, we might find long-term cures for all these diseases and have people living healthier, amazing lives. I see you soon. Bye-bye.